Some people reach living meme status by favorable means. They wake up one morning to find out they're an icon for a whole group of people they never met, and they're celebrated and heralded figure, all because of circumstances that were completely unknown to them. They usually celebrate because other people have held them up. This is not one of those cases. The Southern Poverty Law Center wrote a lying piece about the Boogaloo, spread it all over social media, and so closely associated the image it used for the article with white supremacy that a man is now almost universally considered just that if you reverse search the image. So, let's take a moment to talk about that. The Southern Poverty Law Center is smearing a man they don't know as a white supremacist in an attempt to smear a bunch of other guys they don't know as well. In a piece where they lie about what the Boogaloo is, in an attempt to claim that everyone associated with it is a right-wing extremist and a fascist adjacent racist, they used a photo. Since they had zero proof in the rest of their piece that the majority even qualified as white supremacist, I thought maybe there was something to using that specific photo. So I reverse image searched it, and it came up with a bunch of results, from a variety of sites, which all claimed that the guy in the picture was a white supremacist, sowing division in rallies, but there's a problem with that. He isn't. And they have zero evidence he is. But, since the rest of the piece is directed at smearing an entire group of people they don't know and have no actual information on, why not have the title image of the piece be a man who they also don't know and don't have any real information on? Because they didn't list his name, or say anything about him, I decided to look into it myself. I did some searches and found out that the same caption had been used in multiple places. So I traced the image back to its source, which was a Getty Images page. I saw no information anywhere on that page which would indicate he was remotely white supremacist. I even looked at his outfit to see if there was any patch or button or any sort of other merch or gear that would identify him as such and could find nothing in the variety of images in that set. But that didn't stop the people over at SPLC from writing a whole article about it. Now, I had already contacted the writer responsible, but I figured it might be interesting to contact the photographer as well. He would probably know more about the subject of his photos, right? Well, turns out he did. We had a nice conversation, and I'll be reading that to you all right now. After I reminded people that I had already contacted Cassie Miller, saying, Cassie Miller wrote a hit piece on a thing she doesn't understand, and when a bunch of people came out of the woodwork to tell her that, no corrections were issued and no clarifications made. This is why SPLC is a problem. Legitimacy means unquestionability. Dangerous. In the same thread, I said, Also, the image they used was taken by Logan Cyrus. Maybe he can elaborate on how he identified this guy as right-wing, or proved he was a member of a militia. Because now, due to the hit piece about Boog, this guy is tarred as a white supremacist. Any proof, Logan? Now, admittedly, I thought Logan had something to do with it, that he had authorized this particular use of his work. But he responded not too long later. Logan says, I spoke with him, and he told me his presence was in solidarity with the protesters. My response, okay, thanks for the response. Did he mention anything about being a white supremacist or give you any indication that he is one? Because at this point, reverse image searching any image from that set you took returns white supremacy, hate, and the like. Just curious. He said, He did not, and you won't find those words in my caption info. Also, we've spoken since this photo was made, and I see no reason to believe he's a white supremacist. Because of the nature of my work, the images I make can be used in a variety of ways. My response to that was, Oh, I fully understand that. Looked into doing licensed images for a bit there myself. I'm not holding you responsible for how your images are used. Hashtag IP is theft, and once something is out there, it's uncontrollable. I was only curious as to this particular man. Thanks for elucidating. I think this highlights the difference between fake journalists and real journalists. 
A fake journalist will hide behind the legitimacy of whatever outlet they're writing for and avoid answering any questions or issuing any corrections about their content. A fake journalist will refuse to put out calls for comment to the majority of their alleged subjects and refuse to engage with the actual subject matter at hand. They'll also sensationalize footage they don't understand in an attempt to get clicks. Conversely, a real journalist will answer questions that come their way about their content and be honest with people about what they're putting out there. When I asked this photojournalist for clarification on some of his material, it didn't take more than a day for me to get positive feedback in that regard. I didn't even expect it, to be honest, because I'm incredibly cynical and pessimistic. I see a world of fake journalists out there, and I thought I'd put it out to empty air, just like I did with the woman who wrote the piece. But that didn't happen. Because this is a real journalist we're talking about here, and he wanted to correct the record. And I appreciate that, too. Because not only did he state that he disagreed with the way the image is being used, but he was understanding and followed up with information he personally had about the subject of the photo. Unfortunately, the same can't be said for the hundreds of other outlets who've already used the image in the same way. To smear a man almost nobody knows, destroy the reputation of someone they've never met, and extend the sick, cruel treatment to a score of other people they've also never met and have no idea about. Because these people aren't journalists. They're puppets. They spend all their time trying to find ways to parrot each other for money. They don't care about facts, reason, or evidence. They don't care about facts, reason, evidence, or logic. They just want to smear people and get paid. And I'll be slogging through the full piece at some point, but the rest of the piece is pretty represented by the misuse of that image in the beginning of it. It's all smear, with facts only included to heighten a false sense of legitimacy. But for now, like, comment, share this video, and subscribe, and let everyone who used that image in this way know that they're helping in an act of cruelty and defamation, completely destroying the reputation of a man who never did anything to them. And let me tell you, as someone who's been smeared many times before, I kinda got a stake in smearing being a thing of the past. It will fuck your reputation and destroy legitimate momentum you have, if not actively push you out of town. Maybe we shouldn't be listening to the SPLC for our information on hate, because I can't think of a more hateful thing to do. To craft the poster boy for an evil ideology whole cloth simply because he was walking in solidarity with the movement of free-thinking rational people, sick of police brutality, in an attempt to protect them, makes the Southern Poverty Law Center the real one we should hate watch. And since many official institutions and organizations rely on them for their information about alleged hate groups, perhaps ignore the advice of any institution which does so while these people push blatant nonsense. The fact that these people have any legitimacy at all is a travesty of truth. So keep the boog spirit up, keep that Hawaiian gear colorful, and smash the state.